Good day everyone, I'm Olivier Herman, Professor of Innovation Management and I'm doing research on collaborative practices and communities of innovation. Today I will talk about a fascinating research object, the link between space, forms of collaboration and evaluation, and the challenge of innovation in education. With a couple of colleagues, we have been facing a few challenges while trying to introduce new pedagogical approaches in our institutions. Uh, for instance, we were asked to train engineering students into the design thinking approach and co-design, with a flavor of creativity and even arts into the curriculum. We were asked to convince head of programs that challenges and experiments are a valid form of training. And then we needed to bring students from five different disciplines into the same projects. All these approach have become quite mainstream and creativity and design have been quite extensively been documented for at least a few decades. On top of that, we have seen in quite many organizations, including educational institutions, uh, the emergence of new type of spaces that are supposed to trigger new collaborative practices. So we can list fab labs, maker spaces, third places, open labs, learning labs, and the like. Though they are quite fashionable, often nicely equipped and by essence very visible, uh, these spaces have not always triggered the new practices and the dynamics of innovation they were supposed to introduce, whether in organization or in universities. Spaces by themselves have no magical effects on people. They can help modify practices, but there is a more complex equation than just changing the spatial variable. And it seems that however mainstream they may have become into the discourse, the introduction of design, creativity, arts, or project-based education into higher education might not be as easy as we thought originally. As an illustration, I would like to share with you the following idea. All educational practices and styles display a specific pedagogical signature that is composed of spaces, type of interactions, cognitive orientation, and some strong beliefs about what should be valued, what is considered as learning, and how we should evaluate. And there is an internal, an internal logic to these signatures, and that is why transitioning to a new form is a quite challenging project. Okay. Let's consider the signature of a classical form of ed education. The space is the classroom, or often the auditorium in a university. If you would enter in an unknown building and see a classroom with desks aligned, you would think right away, oh, that's a school. No hesitation. The model here is one of the master that will transmit knowledge to the learners. He or she could engage in a dialogue, but that's still a model of broadcast from the maître, the teacher, the prof. In terms of time, we also have some expectations of 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half. The basic unit is the lesson. The examination and the grade are the main evaluation tools and they are considered as legitimate instruments for assessing knowledge transfer or competence acquisition. So we see here a signature, classroom, lesson, exam, grade. Now let's consider the pedagogical signature of a school of design, an environment where we train designers. The space of reference here is not the classroom, it's the studio. The studio is pretty much a workshop, an area where students work for a long period of time on projects. It could be a studio for specific projects or for a cohort of students. It's a place where the project is central, not the lesson, and where creating something is a way to learn and to be evaluated. Evaluation is learning is made via the critique, the design crit, a regularly organized session where the designs are presented and aimed at getting feedback and new ideas. The goal is not to get a good grade, but to develop an identity, a personal style, to be able to achieve good design. So the signature here is studio, project, crit, style, and identity. 
So you can see that there is a tight connection between the different components of the pedagogical activities, from how we evaluate to the kind of space where we work. Shifting to a new style of learning means a rather complete transformation that does change the profession of students, meaning new expectations and role for learners, and therefore the practice of educators as well, including how to give feedback and evaluate. So space can play an important role in this transformation. Shifting from a classroom to a studio or creating a fab lab does send a message, but it's not enough to complete the transformation. There needs to be a whole system behind it, a logical system that needs to be developed and deployed. So how can we successfully introduce new practices in education? Well, there are no easy answers, but with my colleagues, we certainly discovered that there was a path to be followed for conducting these transitions. You want to know more about it? I will be happy to discuss about it during the Learning Planet Festival 2021. See you there. <laughs>